Welcome back to another episode of the Evo 6 STI Killer presented by Coil Rad. Today I begin to reassemble the front end and I do the wheel reveal. First off, big thanks to Vin at NV Auto who professionally welded up the end tanks onto the intercooler. It's looking mighty fine, mighty proper. And I wanna thank a bunch of you who pretty much schooled me on the way to paint with that Wrinkle Plus uh, VHT paint. And that was, don't let this air dry. What I did, the mistakes I made, and w which is why it was like runny and all that jazz, is I, I let it air dry and I used too much uh, paint on it. So a lot of you said the best thing to do is actually lay it on, then use an, uh, a heat gun to dry it and it'll wrinkle up much nicer than it did before. And as it's done in this area right here, it's, it, it's looking really good. However, the proper way to do this would be to completely strip this back and then redo it again and you'll get this really nice even finish. I still have like a couple of, of small little high spots here and there, but overall the finish is much better. So uh, I want to get on to today's stuff. So I'm going to leave this as is and I'll probably get back to this when this, this car is kind of back together and I've got a little bit of spare time. The other thing I want to mention is so many of you commented that the QRJ tile blow off valve was put on incorrectly and let me show you guys why it wasn't. You see these wonderful instructions? Well, thank you Tile for actually providing these because I think a lot of people do make the mistake of installing this blow off valve incorrectly if you're not looking at the instructions and they clearly state, look, the compressed air goes up this way and how do we have this set up? Oh look, the right way. So I can appreciate why a lot of you would think that this blow off valve would be the other way because the piston is, is facing outwards like this. It just goes to show if you take one split second, even though you may think you're 100% right, do a quick Google search and you will find your answer nine times out of 10 as, as I did because I had to check at home. I was like, wait, did I install that wrong? Even though I looked at the instructions, let me check. Sure enough, it was right there. So just think about that right before you make that comment. But I certainly appreciate all of the comments because good or bad, they certainly helped me figure things out much like that wrinkle black paint official this is the last piece that I need to install to complete the engine bay and of course this is a high pressure radiator cap from Coil Rad and if you're wondering why run a higher pressure rad cap it's pretty simple actually if you increase your pressure in your radiator you increase the boiling point so this is 1.3 bar most cars are around one bar <laughs> we have it fresh clean front bumper is on big shout out to Luke at 242 customs for painting it it is looking fabulous and Craig over at Bonsai Rides Craig thank you so much for importing all these hard little tidbits to find like the Mitsubishi emblem I was missing that vent on the other side of the bumper there he managed to, to bring those things in for me very quickly and whatnot and as you guys can see, there's still the front lip, which I need to put on, which I think we'll, we'll get to in a moment. But beforehand, I wanted to touch on the subject where I think I mentioned in the past, I didn't know if I wanted to run the grill here or should I leave the intercooler exposed. And I think I'm gonna run the grill. I think it just completes the look with the uh, grill up here. 
and I just realized that there's supposed to be a grill that goes here. So I'm gonna have to take this bumper apart again to fit that up or th this area here. And if you guys saw in the video, I used a heat gun on the plastic. That was the first time I've ever tried that. I read online that uh, that's a great way to kind of like rejuvenate the plastic and whatnot. And there's just a bunch of theories as to what it does, if it pulls the moisture out or if it just like melts the plastic. But it seems to have done a somewhat decent job. I'm not gonna complain about it. I think it's way better than it was. So that might be something that uh, if you guys have old tire plastic and you're looking to restore, might be a good way to do it. Nevertheless, I'm gonna pull this back off, put this in and let's have a look. Doesn't that look much better? You guys were right. A lot of you posted in the comments, keep that grill in there and I think it is the right decision because it looks way more complete now, especially with that grill being in there. So for the front lip, the problem that I have here is the, all of the mounting points, as you can see up in, in this area here, 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 they are all broken guys. So if I go to mount this right now, that's why actually I, Luke left some of the, uh, the urethane here so I can kind of like have an idea of the height of it. So if I go to mount this, there's really no way to attach this properly. So my plan of attack here is going to be to grab some of this. So this is the urethane sealer. I'm gonna lay a nice bead down along here and along the sides and see if I can glue some of the, uh, the mounting points onto this bumper here because really that's the only option. I actually looked far and for a long time for a new front lip and I just couldn't find one or even a used one that had all of the mounting brackets and they just don't exist. So this is as good as it gets. Oh man, almost got it on the front lip there. Gotta be careful. Let's lift this lip up. Place it down. Come around here, pop it into place. Urethane is in, it's setting. I'm gonna leave it overnight. As you can see, what I did is I just put some zip ties here with a little bit of foam padding to just push the lip down just a bit because from what I read, that urethane sealer should set hard and it should bond to that plastic really well. So you're gonna get a, a decent adhesion to it. So it should hold the shape, we'll find out tomorrow. However, before I leave, what I really need to do is I need to paint the windshield wipers because they look faded and whatnot. And my trim piece underneath the, the windshield there, all of this was cracked, so I sourced this piece. As you can see, it is faded gray, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, SEM trim black, which should renew this back to a, a nice color. And I think I'm gonna use the same trim black on the wipers, just because. The lips had overnight to cure, and the sealer, the urethane, didn't actually harden. I did a little bit of research and I couldn't find a urethane-based sealer that does harden, so I'm not sure what's on the other side. But the flip side is, it actually works in my favor, so it does have a little bit of give, but it's holding this lip on quite well. So, you know, if you bottom out or whatever, it's going to have a little bit of play. So I think that is almost a benefit for me in that sense. It does fit pretty well. There's a couple of spots here and there where there's a small little gap, but I don't know if that's a, a Mitsubishi thing or maybe a misalignment of the lip thing. Nevertheless, I think it is time we move on here to the headlights, which is a hotly debated topic. Here are my headlight choices. You guys will be familiar with the black housing headlights. These are a two-piece design. We put them on the car and we like them, but I don't know, there was just something off. I didn't love them. I think they may suit a black car much better, not a silver car. I think the contrast was a little high on it. I do like the amber turn signal though. And obviously these are the, the stock ones. I could buff these up, make them look clean. Maybe swap out the clear turn signal for the amber one, which would give me a very stock looking uh, setup. I just don't know. I don't love this style of headlight. I've just always looked at it and thought, it kind of screams 80s. It's not as modern. It doesn't have like a clear lens. So here is number three. This is a one piece headlight. 
And what I like about it is that it does have that clear lens. It also is silver. So these are were available in black, but I thought, you know what? Um, I'm gonna stick with the silver just because I feel like it matches the car a little bit better. There are ones out there that have a uh, dual light, like high beam, low beam setup. I think this one closely resembles the factory one, aside from obviously being one piece and whatnot. So I just don't know, guys. I'm, I'm still out on it. The, the downside to this guy is I do have to cut around the fender, like the, the mounting bracket area, because it won't fit back here. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just like put them up to the front bumper, like put them into the, the area there and let's see. And then you guys can post in the comments which one you think I should run. I think these lights would give the Evo the most modern look, kind of like a resto mod style. I do like them. I think these are my front runners right now. They should really look good. And they're brand new, which definitely does not hurt. These have grown on me. The more I watched the old video, I thought, you know what? They look pretty good. I just find we don't have enough black on this car to really contrast those headlights very well. I do love the amber turn signal though. Option number three. I had to give this one a fair chance, the stock guy, so I just polished the headlight a little bit. And yeah, it, it looks good guys. It really does. I like it. I think it's a very stock good look. I can't believe this has been such a hard decision to make. I've been back and forth on it. Which one am I gonna go with? I was, at first I was thinking for sure I was gonna go with the One Piecers. I like them so much, that's why I ordered them. But I don't love that these are like a deeper blue hue than the Factory Fogs. I just don't think they're, they're looking great. So, Here's what I've decided. I think I'm going with the stock look. Can you believe it? I do like this better than the amber turn signal there. I just find it breaks the car apart. I think it'll be a much smoother transition, but that means I need to do my best job at polishing this stuff because it is very worn out. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna put them on and then you guys can be in the judge, but make, be the judges. Make sure to post in the comments which one you, you guys liked best because I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Those old headlights looking minty fresh. What do you guys think? I'm pretty sold on this look. Check out the clear corner that I added. These were uh, amber beforehand. So I think it really makes this look Nice and clean. Now, just to be devil's advocate, here we have our orange amber. As you can see, I, I like it, but it just doesn't, it breaks it up too much. I, I just don't feel it gives it as clean a look as this side. So I think I am going with this. That's a final. Oh, <laughs> we have ourselves a front end that is complete. Man, this car is coming together and oh, it's looking so good. I am loving it. I'm so glad. I think I went with the uh, the clear sides and the OEM lights. I think it gives it a very OEM look. Very, very happy. Speaking of OEM, these are the fender liners and I think these were the last ones in Japan. They're not making any more of these, so I scored these, which is a huge bonus. Nothing like a fresh set of fender liners to really set this car off. I don't know how long they will last though. That's the million dollar question because with the aggressive wheel and tire package that I have, they may rub, you just never know. I'm not gonna be going super low like this car was before. So it definitely destroyed fender liners. There were pretty much none left on this car when we got it. Um, look at this, Mitsubishi, including all of the fasteners, the bolts, Thank you, that is a huge, huge thing for me. I did notice though, I am missing a cover that goes right on the inside here, which would cover up the, uh, the crank pulley and the oil cooler line. So I may need to source that unless, maybe one of you guys has one kicking around. Let me know, I'd love to buy that from you. Nevertheless, I'm gonna get this bolted in and then we can have a look at the really cool ducts because these vents up here are actually functional. I just noticed there's a little bit of surface rust right here. 
And guys, I know so many of you posted, hey, why aren't you fixing the, the small little rust spot here or, or the little surface rust over there? And what it comes down to is just time. I don't have the time to go through and completely restore this car. I think the underside was the real issue on this car. Up in these areas, it's not so bad. So all I'm gonna do is give it a blast with some fluid film, which is one of the best ways to just like pro protect this stuff so it doesn't uh, get any worse and it'll just lock it in and trap it. Fender liner is in and as much as I hate to cut a brand new fender liner, I do have to. As you can see, this is protruding downwards and that's usually a byproduct of rolled fenders, which I, I, I see these are. So this actually can't tuck underneath the lip, so it creates like an edge here. So all I'm gonna do is just come in and trim this back a little bit further so that it won't rub on the wheel. Okay, I'd say that is, I think, pretty much perfect. There we are, and I can tuck that in. And now we've got a clear area right here. Hey DP, your vents, well guess what? They're not functional like my Evo. Check this thing out. Wow, how cool is this? This is like a full functional air vent. You rarely see this. And I mean, this is back in the 1990s where this was made. As you can see, what this one does, it directs airflow and pushes it downwards and out. I assume, I, I still have a brake duct that is gonna go here. So that may be for it, or it could just uh, be deflecting the airflow downwards um, and past the tire. I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me. On this side over here though, pretty intriguing so this one obviously same thing sucks in there and it pushes it up into there which to me makes more sense because now you can get this air flowing into there and actually going up into the intake area i just had a quick search around the shop and of course there is no panel that goes right here and that's a bit of a problem mainly because we've got this huge gap here for air to come in and not hit the the intercooler and you just go straight outwards so I'm gonna look around, see if I've got some uh, old plastic trim pieces from underneath and see if I can fit them up here somehow. Just found this old tray kicking around. I think this is off of the 240. Kind of crazy, but you know what? When I look at it, these two front bolt holes line up, which is ideal, perfect. And I'm thinking if I just like lop this off right around here, I can probably figure out an easy way to like secure it up here and we'll be uh, good to go. I noticed that we've got a bit of a crack in this under panel here. And I gotta, I gotta admit, I ended up cracking. I saw this on an Instagram ad and was like, whoa, that actually looks pretty cool to bond plastic together. I'm always using zip ties and whatnot, so I figured why not give this a try. And I wanted to get, this is my first time using it. I wanted to get your guys' opinion on it to see whether uh, whether it works or not. As you can see, all it does is heat up the element. And then what you do is just push it into the plastic and then you kind of like twist a little and let go. And then it bonds in there. So I've done these and I, did they feel all right. It seems like you got to do a lot of them. So it is kind of like holding it together, but I don't know, is this better than zip ties? Why don't you guys let me know that I've used this? Don't judge me on this, this is full ghetto fab, but it's functional, no form, it's gonna work. A couple of bolts up here and a couple of zip ties back here hold it in place. It is finally time to get to the wheel and tire reveal. Let's start off with the tires. These are a set of Advan Neova 8008R summer performance tires. They are a 200 treadwear rating and they're the same tire that Dave's running on the STI. So it is going to be a perfectly even battle. There's gonna be no factors in, in terms of tire and performance. These are actually a really good track tire. I find they provide great amounts of grip. They've got really good precise uh, turn in at high speed and good feedback, but they also are a really nice street tire. They cruise down the street very well. They're not uh, loud and I mean, Come on, they look very, very good. So now it is time to show you guys what wheel I have gone with and bam, this is the Enki GTC02. This is their latest and greatest offering. This is an 18 by nine plus 40 offset. It still does provide a decent amount of concave. And as you can see, this is more of a, a subtle wheel. I didn't want to go crazy. I wanted to keep this car streetcar spec. This kind of 
to me has a little bit of a, an homage to Evo wheels in the past with the split spoke design and whatnot with this like uh, hyper silver color, which I really like. These wheels do have a lot of technology that does go into them. They're extremely light. They're extremely uh, robust and, and durable. It's because Anki uses their uh, MAT technology. They've also uh, milled out the spokes here, which is a very motorsports great thing to do. They've got these cool little dimples here and these actually serve as like a way to dissipate heat from the wheel, believe it or not. So anyways, very cool wheel. Let's get this thing bolted on. I think I'm gonna take the Evo off the hoist for the first time so we can get a good look at this car. I can't wait to show you what this car looks like. It is awesome. What a transformation from when we got it. Wow, one last thing before I forget. That is, I gotta install the, uh, the lower windshield uh, trim here and check out the difference. So this is the factory one that I just pulled off. This is the same one just painted with that SEM trim black paint. <clears throat> Excuse me, it looks so much nicer. This paint I absolutely love. It's such an OEM plastic black finish. So if, uh, if you've got old faded trim like this, bust out that SEM trim black. Let's get this on and I can finally show you this car. Wow, what a transformation. I still can't believe it. This was that tired old beat up Evo. Look at it now. There's still a bunch of small things. I gotta adjust the ride height. I feel like the, the rear's I think just a tad too high, but man, it's got aggressive stance. I really dig the wheels on here. This is certainly not a like in your face look. This is the type of car that you see driving down the road and you look at it and you're like, wait, what is that? Is that thing stock? No, it's not. There's so much packed under that hood there. Wow, I'm still like kind of at a loss of words. This has been such a journey for both Dave and I, and this thing is just like so close to being ready to be done. I am not going to be starting this car anytime soon, not without Dave. And A, I wanna just like give him the ability to be here and have that moment too, because we did put that engine together. And I, the second thing is I just don't wanna do it myself. I'm a little nervous, you know, starting the car, like having to run around, you gotta bring that, the RPMs up pretty quickly, like look for leaks and all that. It's certainly a two man job. So there is gonna be a hiatus right now in terms of getting this car started and then getting it off to the dyno and all that. That will happen later on. There's still a, a couple of small things. I do, do need to do the interior. There's some work that needs to be done there. So let me know in the comments, are you guys interested in watching a video that does show what I do in the interior, like fixing some stuff up? Or are you interested in just jumping to the next episode, which will be this car starting for the first time? Well, I think that is going to be officially a wrap on this episode. Make sure to post in the comments. Tell me what you think. Is this car looking good? Do you like the wheels? Do you hate the wheels? Do you hate the stance? Tell me, tell me all the things I did wrong. Tell me all the things I did good. I appreciate all the feedback, guys. And if you're interested in any of the products shown in today's video, make sure to check out the video description and support the companies that do support us. Whoa, why is this not moving? Oh, probably because. I'm open this. Whoops. Duh, McFly. You're supposed to puncture a hole up here, aren't you? Let's have a look here. Of course you are.